Welcome to, to How to Stay Married So Far. We haven't done one of these for quite a few weeks. Put the inspires down. And the reason for that is we have been illicitly busy in a good way with Vlogmas. On Vlogmas. So um, if you're listening to this on podcast, please head over to Nadia Swala and Family YouTube channel and check out our Vlogmas. And if you've never heard of the word Vlogmas before, which somebody did say to me, we've got so caught up in it that we just think everybody knows what Vlogmas means. It's ba basically a daily vlog about Christmas um, for the whole of December right up till the 25th. Do you think a vlog at Easter would be called Vlogta? <laughs> or vlogster. 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 That's what anyway, so that's why we've been a bit remiss. So yes, yeah, I think apologies that we haven't done any. We yeah. are making a New Year's resolution that we are going to endeavour to do a um, How to Stay Married So Far once a week in the New Year because mm. you guys really like them and we get a lot of very meaningful mm. comments we and do. feedback, which not only we hope, there's a sort of feedback thing, literally feedback is feedback, isn't it? So it feedbacks to us and it helps us and hopefully it feedbacks yeah, to you. it really does. When we read your you. comments, it really helps us. Mm. And, you know, we by no means, and we haven't said this for quite a while, are experts. No. We are not in any way trained. This is just us sharing our experiences of marriage, which most of the time we're bloody awful at, actually. Yeah, it's just car crash, really. <laughs> Um, so we're just sharing our experiences, hoping that helps. We're back. very aware of how contradictory a lot of our messages are. We're aware that sometimes we say things that seem to be completely at odds with something else we've said. But that's life. Yeah, and the thing is, we've been to marriage guidance counsellors a number of times, and a lot of the time we're just struggling to try and put into practice what they've told us to do. We know what we're supposed to do. It's like the other day we were just bickering on about something, weren't we? And we just stopped and went, why don't, bickering. Why don't we do? What the, what the marriage guidance counsellor told us to do, and then we had an argument about it. So, so what is this podcast about? But anyway, so, so if you're watching this on podcast, welcome, but head over to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You're listening to this podcast. Listening, not watching, listening to this. Uh, go over to our YouTube channel, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, because we do upload all manner of films. Mm. We do a lot of reviews on movies and movie trailers. We do mental health stuff. We do cooking. We do vlogs. So go over there, because there is a plethora of fabulous shows to Of course, watch. the advantage of watching this, uh, rather than just listening to the podcast, you can hear how broken we are, but watching it, it's like 4D <laughs> and 3D. <laughs> you can see how broken we are. Yeah. So, so putting all that to one side, we are here to Christmas. talk about Christmas, and specifically Christmas within marriage, because it is a very tense time for a lot of relationships, we know a lot of people that listen to this aren't actually married. A lot of relationships. There's so much expectation. I think the highest rate of people going to see a divorce lawyer is just after Christmas, isn't it? Just after New Year. All manner of statistics yeah. peak at Christmas, and they include all sorts of things, such as issues of diagnos diagnosis of depression, divorce, uh, separation, suicide, all sorts of things go on the increase mm. in and around Christmas. I think even before we had Instagram perfection and all of yeah. that, we had this pushed at us subliminally. Well, Christmas, is... Christmas is a perfect thing and everyone's having, it's got to be perfectly romantic. You've got to be the best wife, the best mother, the best daddy, the best husband. And it's enormous pressure. And of course, on top of that, it all costs a bloody fortune yeah. as well. So whatever guess... is rumbling underneath your relationship with it, by, by financial stresses and strains, a lack of romance, a lack yeah. of time together, it all floats to the surface. I would argue, I would go so far as to say that I would also, I, I, I sense that Christmas prior to social media, was almost the first tentpole event in the whole of society sort of lives yeah. that, that created social media yeah. pressure. Because yeah, all you ever true. saw, all I ever saw as a kid was a Christmas that I rarely kind of recognised or, mm. or saw, which was one of, you know, the idyllic father and mother mm. and dad playing with the kids. And, mm. you know, I mean, no one, how many of us Nobody actually, actually has no, that. No, I mean, Do you, you remember the year when we bought a mousetrap and we ended up throwing it yeah, across the room? Yeah. I mean, I do think, and I do. Hey, fucking mouse trap! Yeah. I feel trapped. I feel trapped. I mean, and I think it's funny you should just say that. You know, all the stuff about finance and emotion and everything else. I do think Christmas is a very curious time where everyone is under inordinate pressure, and it's pressure from the past. 
It's pressure mm. to do with the Plus relationships you've got. Well, no, it's pressure to do with the relationships mm. you've got or had. It's a reminder of who's gone. It's a reminder of, of how relationships aren't quite as healthy, perhaps, as they were before. It's a reminder of who you're living with, because it's a part time of the year where you're all sat in the house at the same time, because most people aren't working. I mean, not everyone. I, reckon, I mean, I've worked on Christmas Eve and Christmas morning. But, you know, there are a lot... It's a time where everything is put under the magnifying glass. Mm. Everything. And, and you're suddenly with people that you wouldn't normally be with. Yeah. And... Yeah, there's just there's I mean, just enormous pressure. I remember a huge narrative, a part of the narrative of Christmas for me for a, a number of years when I was not in a relationship or sort of, you know, in a sort of dalliance mode. Most of Christmas was a process, and this is terrible, of, in a sense, making good or dealing with the carnage of Christmas office parties. I mean, we always joke about Christmas parties, but Christmas parties are the scourge of so many relationship crises because it's an opportunity where people we go just let their hair well people down. Let, they let their hair down but it's that sort of slightly like that thing you know what happens in such and such is doesn't get is you know stays in such and such yeah location. yeah all that sort of stuff and and i do think that you know i was a victim of it and i was a perpetrator of it you know you go out you think ah oh, flipping hell this is it and it would it it's was a, a licensed and it was an incendiary it. device even if you were single and not in a relationship to how you dealt with your kids and Christmas. And, you know, so it was always a time of, for me, Christmas has always been a time of great disruption emotionally. Mm. It's never actually been a time of, and, and to, until relatively recent years with, with, with our two girls, because even with my older girls, it's been a time of loss and absence and not having them. Mm. So it's been a very tricky, tricky period Christmas, full of conflicting emotions. Um, yeah. You're looking tearful, are you okay? Oh, do you need a cuddle? No, no. Oh, sweetie. Um, and yeah, Christmas is, yeah. It's very, very difficult Christmas, isn't it? I mean, we, I mean, look at us, we do Vlogmas. And that is the best side of Christmas for us. Yeah. Because it is sparkly and fun and magical. Yeah. And it's been so magical with the girls growing up. So magical. Yeah. But for me, there's there's always a shadow over it as well. Um, you know, Do you want me to <laughs> just trying to breathe? Uh, yeah, there's always been a shadow over it, which maybe I'll talk about one day. But there has been, there is a shadow of loss around Christmas, and. I mean, talk about conflicting, because it's also, of course, the day that mm. gave birth to Maddie. Mm. Christmas Day, mm. five o'clock in the morning, our first Christmas as a married couple. Yeah. And I have a blooming baby yeah. on the sitting room floor. Well, upstairs. <laughs> oh, yeah, she was upstairs. Sorry, <laughs> Kiki was downstairs. <laughs> I was actually thinking of the kitchen floor because I spent so much time in the... In the yeah, curious that that, that was the sort of first meaningful present between us both in a weird way, wasn't it? Hang on, matey flip. You're not going to ever get a better present than that. No, 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 I know. But, I mean, we were both kind of there for choosing it. But, um, yeah, I mean, um, yes. And, I mean, I was aware of how conflicted a time it was for you and how it was a sort of day of... of, of it's become a day of an extraordinary highs in terms of Maddie's birthday and birth. And, and obviously, you've had your own experience, you know, sad experiences at Christmas Day. And... And really, if I'm honest, to this to this day, to this year, as I enter this week running up to Christmas, I woke up this morning feeling deeply sad about my, you know, situation with two of my girls and when I'm going to see them and I'm not going to see them. And, you know, it's slightly different now because they're grown up, but it's a norm that's been established for so many years. Oh, you, you were... You were never allowed to have them for a no. single Christmas when no. you were growing up. And I think a lot of people listening are going to be in the same position. You know, all this blended, this wonderful word, blended family. How many people actually live in a blended family? Mm. Usually there's a lot of... Um, God, what's the word? There's a lot of anger going on around yeah. this time of year. Yeah. Frustration about access and all of that so well, I th I think it's... your whole our whole marriage and all of our christmases 
there's been a shadow of what's been missing with yeah. my stepdaughters and your and your children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because we were never allowed to have them on Christmas Day. No, I agree. And unfortunately for me, what's frustrating about that as a grown-up, as I head into, because they're both grown-up women now and they're, they're going to do their own thing, is it was never their norm either. So no. it's not even going to be a norm that they would return to. So no. the very thing that I, I, I think I felt and hoped for in the sort of last years of their teenage years and then just in the last couple of years... I, I thought and I hoped that it would become a tradition, for want of a better expression, that they'd want to come to dads, but... Um, they can't. It's they can't. been their whole life. It's been their whole life. And, you know, that's not their fault, but it is hard. I mean, because I always felt, I knew we had our two children, but I always knew you were sad on Christmas Day mm. because they weren't here. So, and I just... And that made me sad. Yeah. That did make me sad. I mean, I yeah. never said that to you because I didn't, and because I, I never wanted you to feel. I didn't want you to feel any more sadness or any more pressure. Mm. But I felt sad because I knew that it was. And again, I know there'll be so many people listening to this that feel the same. But that must be the case for so many people. I mean, you yeah. too. I mean, you know, it's the sense of incompletion with people who. You know, for whatever reasons, we can love family members, but we cannot necessarily get on with them, and we cannot necessarily like everything they mm. do and they don't necessarily like everything about us but mm. well um, I mean I always have my own shadow don't I because I've got people in my family that I don't talk to and for me it's the right thing to do not to talk to them because I've made that decision that that's what's healthy for me and my mm. family yeah. but that gives me a very different Christmas to the Christmas I had when I was growing up yeah, yeah. and again what we're what's pumped out at us because advertisers want that pumped out and now we have to have the added layers of social media that everything is everything is perfect and but most families mm. they're, they're estranged from some people mm. I bet practically every family is but I think that's again it's the pressure there is I mean I think we underestimate the inordinate amount of pressure I mean even just this week as I'm running towards Christmas day I'm thinking about how it's going to work on the day and who, you know, whose who's expectations. And, and more often than not, I mean, I, on one level, I'm an enormous fan of Christmas. I got that from a nan. And, you know, it's always, it was always a time for me as a child of sort of security within a sort of very chaotic and, and you know, bumpy childhood. Um, it was always a sort of, a, a sort of life raft, if you like, of emotional stability. So, mm. it, you know, it, it did become a place of sanctuary and safety, which is why... I do find it quite distressing at times. I always feel at sea and there's always a sense of incompletion around my girls and the four girls. I'd be nothing would make me happier than having all four girls around the table at the same time. But, um... Mm, take a moment. These, these, this, this, this. And this is what's so painful, isn't it? Years that are lost. You have, how do you, because all the advice is, you know, stay in the moment, see what relationships you've built, but oh, there's so much perfection that we want for our children, isn't there? We yeah. want to deliver all that we didn't get. We want yeah. it to look like the Christmas cards. We want, want everything to be perfect. And I mean, Kay often says, you know, Christmas is a conspiracy to keep, parents working and crafting like many parents <laughs> for not a lot in return yeah and sometimes it can feel like that can't it it mm. feels like it's another great big stick you can pick up and bat batter yourself over the head mm. for for not being able to deliver and package in the right way and i think it's very i think it's very pressured for children too i think children are often looking at what other families yeah. have got and i do think the financial skew on christmas oh, is a really God. tricky one because of course I used to go into school and pretend I'd got a television and pretend I'd got all sorts of mm -hmm. things because mm -hmm. not that my parents were poor, but my mother was very, you know, what's the word? She was very... <laughs> Secret sanctuary. <laughs> no, she was just, she just didn't believe in excess. We had no, lovely Christmas, we loved our yeah, Christmas yeah, yeah. at home and the presents we got. Well, but when we went into school, we were embarrassed yeah. that we hadn't got a telly and we hadn't got this and mm. we hadn't got that. But that's um, something I've really liked, because, I mean, I was indulged by my grandparents. You know, they could afford to, and, and I was the only grandchild for a long time. And, in a weird way, what I've loved about Christmas is with you... You weren't indulged in it. In I mean, they weren't wealthy. No, no, they weren't wealthy. No, but, but, I, got, got, no, but I got Mousetrap. 
Yeah, exactly. When you say indulge, people <laughs> no, think I mean, you mean indulge you've got cars and, some, and Indulge as far as I've got mouse trapped in a game of life. <laughs> exactly. Maybe that's the same. Well, that was my idea of total Less indulgence. Than they lived in a, in a wee bungalow in a by wee, the sea. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think one of the things I have got from you, and I do remember the first few years were so lovely, was a sense of how all those parts of Christmas that aren't around just the expenditure. I mean, obviously there's expenditure on food, but just the idea that, you know, cheap and affordable food you could cook. There was nice food. I mean, I never had nice food at Christmas. I mean, we always had a Christmas meal, but Nan couldn't yeah. cook. You know, food was never a thing for us. So there are so oh, many yeah. lenses that you can come at Christmas. And of course, what happens with food? I mean, in our household, it was a big deal. That it was the only time of the year that the family would sit in the tiny dining table. You remember it, Dan and yeah. my Nan's. But my granddad would never join us. And it was always a great disappointment <gasps> oh to me. Oh God, he wouldn't see me for no, Christmas No, he'd, he'd stay lunch. with his, his, his meal on his tray, on his lap. And, and oh yeah, God. and it would have made Nan's day. And the food was inedible, but it was Christmas food. You know, and a trifle was too much alcohol went in because she was always heavy handed. And um, But there was no sort of joy around that side of it. And so I loved all that, you know, coming into your family. And, there, you know, I do, when I look back, I do think there are times, it's a, it's a really tricky time where one can almost flagellate yourself with all the times it seemed much more perfect than this year. And I, I have to yeah. really work hard. I mean, going back into CBT at the moment, I'm having to work really hard this week of thinking of all the things, not the what ifs of how awful or all of the time, how it's not like that and how it's not like that, but how it could be like this or how it will be like that. And, and it struck me yesterday as we were doing something, I thought, God, it's gonna be quite a quiet Christmas this Christmas for a variety of reasons. Mm. You know, Izzy's not here. Fleur's not here, um, you know, uh, circumstances are such that, you know, there might not be as many people just, just free flowing through as, as there have been in previous years. And so it just, I, I don't know, it just... I, I, and then yeah. sometimes I think I'm sort of bouncing around and we're doing this vlogmas thing and you are getting, I mean, you get the authentic us. I mean, you don't get trapped in a paella dish and, and try and plan that, that just happens. <laughs> And you don't have moments where you look as rough as houses as I do. You know, it just is the way yeah. we are. Our vlogmas is very it's real. It's very real. But there are still, even within that, there are times where I'm thinking, actually behind the scenes of my heart, I'm just sort of, I, I feel slightly heavy hearted and a bit kind of, oh my God, mm. it's coming well, it quicker It kind of puts quicker. a spotlight, doesn't it, on, on everything that you're worrying about Christmas, doesn't it? Mm. And, it, and also, I can't, all... I can't help but look forward to next year, and it's like, oh God, what's the next year going to bring up? Oh, oh, I don't do that. I don't do that. You see, I'm just up until Christmas. I'm just up until Christmas the whole time. And of course, you know, our first Christmas as a married couple, having a baby mm. on Christmas Day, and it being such a blooming shock. God mm. love her, and we love her to pieces, but anyone that's had a baby will know it is just like, it, it, it's an explosion into your life and into your relationship. And, you know, just not being able to lie around and sit in the pub all day and do all of that yeah, sort of stuff. Yeah, we've never really had that, have we? such a massive shock. Yeah. And that Christmas, I remember, because I'd, we'd been two days, hadn't we, here, with me in labour. And then, as I think a lot of you know, I live next door to my parents. My sister had been with us the whole two days while I'd been in labour. And then she got up at five, she left here at five o'clock in the morning when Maddie was born and went next door and cooked a full mm. Christmas dinner. And then we went over there for mm. Christmas lunch. Mm. I mean, stumbling across the icy garden, mm. holding a new baby. I mean, well, and, I mean, can I just put my hands up and say I felt the whole thing was crazy. I wanted to be in a hospital safely, <laughs> then escorted home in a taxi or driven by myself like a normal family. But no, you're right. We were like, it was like Moses in a basket in the garden, traipsing through the bus stop with all your family there sort of delivering vine leaves. I didn't know what the hell had happened. <laughs> I, mean, I felt like I was in the Old Testament. <laughs> your well, dad looking like, I think your dad had just played Moses. Oh, my dad couldn't believe it. It was so magical. It my was magical. It was, it. it was bizarre. My dad just couldn't believe it. He was, yeah. But again, that was bittersweet, wasn't it? Because he was so excited about Maddie, as was, you know, mum and dad. Jesus, you know. And your, ma and your nan was here. We don't yeah. have her here anymore. No. We've lost nanny Thelma. And I remember my dad calling, phoning those that I am now estranged from in my family and saying, there's a baby, there's a baby, and they wouldn't speak and they wouldn't come and look at the baby. Do you remember? Mm. And that being so sad. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes. So that was bittersweet. Oh, Christ. Yeah. You see, this is the thing. You look it's over a Christmases and they are wonderful. 
But they are also, there is so much It's happiness. like a Christmas carol. You know the three ghosts, the ghost, ghosts of Christmas past, the ghosts of Christmas future, and the ghosts of Christmas present. I mean, that's yeah. such an on-point yeah, sort of actually, story for, for how it works for all of us. I wonder if Dickens was thinking that when he wrote it. But, you know, this whole idea that <clears throat> no sooner does a positive thought come in, then it's absolutely, it's fucking <laughs> knocked out <laughs> by, a, by an absolutely traumatic, yeah. terrible thought. And, you know, good comes no. about. But, yeah. I mean... The biggest, one of the biggest confluences on our relationship right back then, though, of course, was alcohol. I mean, it's a tricky time for families because I think a lot of people, we underestimate the number. I've seen a number of messages come through on our Vlogmas saying, oh... Well, it was on I that mean, Instagram feed. We, we, oh, we posted a picture yeah, right. yesterday of Mark. I posted a picture of a film of Mark yesterday dancing like... Well, Kiki had just filmed it just before. Really dancing party. like no one had was watching but him. It's the most I amazing... I don't think we could do it again. The most amazing <laughs> dance, and, uh, and, and and I put in the message underneath, uh, you know, that, that Mark was doing this, this is him dancing, he's amazing, and, and don't forget, guys, he's 100% sober. And there's a lot of messages underneath that made you really think. Well, they really struck me, because, I mean, I remember, you know, as a child, and my mum struggled with drinking, da 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 um, I, I sensed in a number of the messages, oh, wow, he's, he's having so much fun, how great that he's sober, it must be such a happy household. Now, A, that ain't the case, because don't think that I'm sitting here like that, dancing like a piece of wibbly-wobbly stuff all the time. I'm not, and, and as a family, we contend with all of our emotions down times as well. But it did make me think about Christmas is a time that I, u- I used to for a lot of children where they become really Terrifying. the most estranged from their own parents. Because their parents piss the whole time. Yeah, because they get so drunk. I'm so proud of you. And I see so many instances, I've seen very close to home instances of, of, of friends, family friends and family members themselves go through experiences of seeing parents have a bit too much to drink. And whenever I see that look in a child or a young adult's mm. eyes when that's happening, it really resonates for me because... They don't like it, children really no, don't like no, no, it. They, they don't, don't like want it. their... They want their... I mean, even me being a bit too silly, I can't be the silly... I'm not even talking about with a, right. having had drink. Even if I'm a bit too silly, the girls don't like it. You're the silly one. They always like to know that they're yeah, anchored, yeah. don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I loved that you got those... that we got those messages on Instagram because... It again confirmed to you what an incredibly difficult thing it is to do. Yeah. I don't care. It's we live in a world where everything is drink focused. Mm. Christmas is so about drink. I mean, yesterday in the supermarket, I couldn't believe how many gifts mm. there were. Mm. Alcoholic gifts, gift, gifts. Mm. And you know, you one day at a time, with enormous cost, because it's really, really hard to stay sober. You do that, and look what that means for our children. Well, I mean, I just hope so that it's... Amazing. I mean, the silliness that I try and bring to things is, is that I just want the girls to know that you can be silly without a drink. But, for, exactly. you know, it's not... I don't want to go on about how great or not me achieving it is. But you don't Christmas. have to, I can. No, 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 but I do think <laughs> Christmas... I think for people in relationships watching this and then, you know, how to stay married, it's... You, you, I, I would be, imagine that a number of people are heading into Christmas dreading some member of their family and how they're going drink to overindulge in drink because, because it's an excuse what do they yeah. call it in air drinking on so it's drinking yeah. on a reason so drinking on somebody's death drinking on the fact that it's christmas mm. drinking on that you had a stressful day drinking on and christmas hands everybody a golden ticket oh, absolutely. get as smashed as you like the whole time i mean i actually i never really have that busy a christmas mm. i have a couple of drinks on christmas day because i do think it's about children mm. it's not about parents mm. getting pissed mm. but i think for the vast majority but i think a lot oh of my our, God, those a lot first of other few people years were really hard oh. with me and you because yeah. i mean on and every christmas i i feel so bad for you because it's all that cosy drinking, it's the pub oh, drinking. It's the Baileys, it's the it's twinkly the lights in the pubs in Soho. It's all of that. And yeah. I do drink in the house, and I know people often say underneath our vlogs that I shouldn't, and Mark's an alcoholic, and we shouldn't have any drink in the house. It would be very sad if you didn't. I can't stress enough that Mark, I know that that would make Mark yeah, really unhappy, and he's never been like that since the and day he came out of rehab. I would also hazard to say that I think it would create an entirely unnatural situation for mm. the children where there has to be some presence without of alcohol in your lives better that it's a healthy presence because it's going to be in everyone's life it is in everyone's lives so my, yeah. my sense some, of, some recovering alcoholics can only mix with people that are the recovering alcohol and that's what works for them and keeps them yeah. sober so that's yeah. right and that must yeah. be what they do yeah. but other recovering alcoholics like you want to 
want to be able to be anywhere, <clears throat> don't you? But do share with us, is it a time of year where either... But then there's another yeah. thing with alcohol, where I think some people are in such deeply unhappy relationships or, in, or are having to face for a, a period, protracted period of time, the week or so around Christmas, realities of their relationship, that alcohol becomes a safe refuge. I think for a lot more, you know, you know, for a lot of people who are in, say, in a relationship where they know there's a lot of sort of problems, but they can't articulate them and they can't connect with their partner, Christmas becomes a point where whoever's kind of, not, not that anyone's responsible, but in two very different ways, men and women can separate through alcohol, mm. you know, and there, but there's this sort of perverse idea that it will somehow bring you together mm. and that actually by the end of Christmas, I would be fascinated to know how many sort of instances mm. at Christmas where people come out the back end of it, tumbling into January, looking for divorce lawyers and what have you, you know, I go back to, I, I'd be fascinated to know what the statistics are on misdemeanours occurring in the run-up yeah. to Christmas, through yeah. Christmas parties and all sorts of silly <coughs> behaviour through no fault of any, anyone doing any, anything other than just getting a Listen, bit too drunk. all adults are just children just trying to be grown-ups. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're all struggling. Yeah. We say it to our I kids fail all, all the time. The time. Yeah. We just, we just, we just... We're just adult children. Yeah, That's all yeah. we are. And Does it's it really, bit... really hard to manage these relationships, yeah. to manage all the expectations that we have put on us uh, in so many different ways. And Here's one of the things that's really useful. So a couple of things, <coughs> if you want some actual useful tips, I'd say, for kind of getting through a tricky period of Christmas around things like alcohol and not drinking and drinking and all that kind of stuff, is just don't try and, if you're drinking, just try not to start so early in the day. Because it is that thing, it's a little bit what I call the airport permission, where you go into an airport at any yeah, time of day and you're allowed to drink. Everyone's having a bloody name at 9am. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so it's 6am, brilliant, let's have a couple of beers, you know. It's 12 um, o'clock somewhere. Exactly. Um, you know, and I think, you know, it's a, it's a funny time of year where we sort of say we're con controlling it the rest of the year, we're going to have a really abstemious January, we're going to have, was it... February vlog, whatever, all these words, stopped over, we're going to have a dry January. <laughs> all these weird things are going to kick in. Just rain down, just maybe just drop down how much you're going to drink over Christmas by one drink in the day. Mm. Just see if you can, if there's one drink you're thinking, I'll have another one, mm. just don't have that one. Mm. But another thought is, which I think is the nicest gift at Christmas, and it's something that I struggle with, but it's something that AA has taught me. I don't go to AA all the time, by the way, but it is a really good thing, is whenever you walk through a door into the countless social situations you're going to be in at Christmas, whoever you are, however you feel that perhaps you're the hard done by one and he's the one at fault or she's the one at fault, walk into that room and be of service. Be of service. That is the greatest gift you can give. Explain to people what So being what of service is, is if you're going to walk into a room and I'm actually not in the right frame of mind for all of Nadia's family being here and I personally would rather be in the room over there like a bar humbug just reading The Observer and moaning. Actually, no. Make yourself walk through the door, come in, smack a smile on your face, pour everyone a drink, make them feel at home, make them feel convivial. Do it for your partner because your partner... It's like, oh my God, this is so easy, this is so nice. Mm, because I think so nice. there are so many resentments within relationships where, oh, I don't want to see them or I don't want to see such and such and, oh, do we have to see such and such? And then that resentment's taken out on the person who really wants to see that person. That happens a lot at Christmas. Do we have to see such a... Oh, are we invite... Oh, who's coming over on Boxer? Mm. It's really hard. And of course, you know, it is a time where you're being with lots of other people. Be of service to the person you are in love with and just make it easy for them. And I say that to myself because it's mm. easy just to get locked into... I just want to be with the girls and I just want to be well actually you know what it's not just about you Christmas mm. and that does help it's open just, your it's, heart open your heart and, and with CBT CBT thinking just just try and uh, you know as I, say, I keep saying to, to CBT the girls CBT is a kind of therapy yeah cognitive, cognitive behavioural therapist it's like rather than approaching each day with dread which I often do and thinking oh god what if and <laughs> how can we afford that and what if she doesn't like that and how am I going to get that and will there be enough time for that Think in terms of well, what if it ends? What if she likes it? What if she doesn't want a lot? What if she's going to be mm. happy with that? Always think of the positive outcome as well as the negative outcome. It's really hard. It's really hard. Can you hard. do that all day today, please? Straight no, after I'm going to. As podcast. soon as I press stop on this, I'm going to go into the bathroom and <laughs> sob my heart out. <laughs> so there you go. So I hope this hasn't been too depressing. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> and I'm holding up a mince pie to those who are listening. So you need to go over and subscribe in order to see, see how to make these. Pie. See how to make these. Come and see my mince pie. Happy Christmas, Happy everybody. Happy Christmas. <laughs> Bye.